the Joe Rogan experience. Did you have a dumb moment? I had a lot of insights. Um, I don't know if I... Yeah, I did, actually. How many I, different trips did you have while you're doing this? I had uh, six or seven. I, I, so I did a uh, couple, two psilocybin trips, one guided, one not, an LSD trip guided, uh, a couple ayahuasca circles, and then um, I had a really weird psychedelic called 5-MeO-DMT, which is the smoked venom of the Sonoran Desert Toad. Who figured that out? You know, should yeah. get some kind of prize. Um, but um, That's a pretty... Pretty potent one. Very potent, and thank God, short acting. I'm um, short lived. Yeah. Um, it was it was actually a horrible experience. That really, was, you had that a was bad my experience. worst. Yeah, I had a great experience. On you it. did? Yeah. Yeah. So what was what was wrong with it? So, I you know you take like one puff, and before you exhale, um, I was. I mean, there's a synthetic version too, right? right. I was taking the venom. Um, you're shot out of a cannon. There's no lead up. Right. It's no warm up. It's like. Boom. And I felt like I was actually like strapped to the outside of a rocket, you know, yeah. going through space and through clouds and like the G forces pulling down my cheeks. And it was just this mental storm yeah. without any, nothing to orient myself. There was right. no space. There was no time. There was no self. And um, it was just unendurable, this punishing roar in my ears. And someone who had done it said eventually it's like a takeoff and you get into orbit and, it, and it's, it's very nice at yeah. that point. But what happened with me is I had, the, I had the storm. I mean, I felt like it was like the metaphor I use in the book is like I said, I can't explain this. You can't tell a story without place, time, and character, right? right. I had none of those. Right. <laughs> um, it was just this inchoate energy. And I said it was, it was like the before the Big Bang. You remember that? Well, obviously nobody does. Yeah. But, but there was pure energy and no matter yet and no time yet. I mean, that's where I was. And um, it was horrible. It was terrifying. And I thought I was dying. But then you, uh, you come down as kind of a suborbital flight. And, and then I started coming down. And suddenly I could feel, oh, I got a body. You know, I was touching my legs. I have a body. And like, oh, there's a, there's a floor. There's, there's space. And then there's time. And the, and the universe kind of reconsolidated. And I had this feeling of incredible gratitude. Yeah. Not just for being alive, which all of us have had at one point or another, but that anything existed. I was, I was grateful for the fact that there is something and not nothing because yeah. I'd seen what nothing was like. And so in that sense, it ended up kind of positive, but you wouldn't want to go there to have that experience. So subsequently, somebody said to me, a very experienced psychonaut who I was telling this story to, he said, you didn't have enough. <laughs> That's what I was just going to tell you. Really? Yeah, because you only took one hit. You usually take three. You take three and the rocket ride, the rocket ride leads you somewhere. It takes Wait, you to the center of the You universe. take three, three, three? Three I mean, in a three, row. Three in a row. Take at the a same big time. One, Blow it out, take a big one, blow it out, take a big one. And as you're taking the third one, you're already seeing the world crystallize in front of you. It already starts turning into geometric patterns. You put the pipe down, lay back in the chair, and <laughs> you just shoot off to the center of the universe. The, the terrifying thing is you cease to exist. Like yeah. It's the one drug that I've ever taken where you don't, you're not there anymore. Yeah. Uh, even NN dimethyltryptamine, which is uh -huh. the difference between 5 methoxy dimethyltryptamine is just an ox oxygen molecule attached uh -huh. to it. But NN dimethyltryptamine is incredibly visually stimulating. 5 uh, methoxy is not. Yeah. It's just white. It was white. It yeah. was definitely white. I don't know how I could have taken three hits because I hadn't exhaled the first it. one when I was gone. Just, well, I don't know what you're... I, was I only did the synthetic version of it. Yeah. You're doing this frog And the person version. I know who did the synthetic version had a very different experience, and they mm. felt like they were installed in the firmament as this happy yeah. star. But I didn't get there. So it... Who knows? I did something wrong. Okay. I don't think you did. I just think you, you had a different experience. And uh, I mean, obviously, obviously there's got to be some sort of chemical difference. I mean, you're probably getting other things in that frog venom as well as pure you, DMT. That's right. That may be it. Yeah. I, mean, I, lot, I don't know the answer to that. It's fucking frog spit. I mean, <laughs> I mean do you By know the way, no harms are, no no frogs were no. harmed in the making of this well, drug. It, it ex, it's excreted on the outside of their right. body, and what most people you can do milk is that, them. Yeah, you you rub them on a glass and then let it dry off, and then you scrape it That's off right. the glass. And it crystallizes. It. Yeah. yeah, I Good heard you just kind of squeeze them, and then it sprays the glass, mm -hmm. and overnight it turns into it looks like brown sugar. Yeah, it's an amazing thing. You're the first person who knows anything about it that I've that who well, has used to be able me. to buy it. Used to be able to. It buy was legal till recently. 
2011. Jug of this shit. Oh my god. Off, offline, uh, I bought it from some company, American Chemical Company or something, and they send it to you. And I had enough to get the entire state of California high for several days because <laughs> it doesn't take much. It doesn't. But it's not something you want to do very often. It's and I don't think it has the same kind of healing properties because you're not bringing back information that's oh, usable. Oh, I brought back a lot. You did? Yeah, I brought back uh, a lot about myself. And one of the things that I realized, like as I was, I recorded, uh, what I would do is post-trip, I'd hit a tape recorder right when I became conscious again and start talking about the experience. And <clears throat> what I remember saying, about the 5-methoxy DMT experience is like, as I'm trying to recount what happened, I feel my ego trying to retake hold of the situation and even use words in a way that might impress you with my ability to describe things or as, you know, as a professional comedian too, I was aware that like a lot of what you're doing, you're saying things in a way that's pleasing to people so that they get excited about hearing yeah, you talk. Yeah, yeah. And I was very aware of that while I was doing that. I'm saying, I'm saying, I'm trying to explain things that are not possible to explain because the words that we're using were all invented for a world that doesn't exist in the DMT dimension. And once, once you break through, it is so profoundly alien that any words- And liberating? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Well, in a way, I mean, it, may, it made me really, truly realize that we are in a soup of, of atoms. And that it's not, yeah, there's not like Michael Paul and Joe Rogan and Jamie Vernon in a room. Here's a wood table. There's oxygen yeah, between right. us. No, this, the, we're in a, a, a universal stew yeah, of, of particles. <laughs> yeah, and it breaks those particles down, or at least it gives you a view into that. And you cease to exist, which is the most bizarre thing, because it's so similar to N and dimethyltryptamine chemically, but so different in, in experience. the fact that you're not there. Yeah. While you're doing regular, D, like, NN dimethyltryptamine, which is the active ingredient in yeah. ayahuasca. Have you done that, the pure yeah. version of it? No, not the pure version. The pure version is like a very short, much more intense ayahuasca experience. I've never done ayahuasca. I've only done mm -hmm. the D DMT version. But the By you, injection or no smoking it uh -huh. but when you what you get out of it is you're there while this is happening yeah. and you're just you're blown present. away and you're like i can't and that's believe true in i'm seeing too. you're and present they, but there's all these entities that are trying to calm yeah. you down relax relax take it in settle down settle down they're all trying to calm you down and 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 that's alleviate helpful. yeah it's 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 weird, you know, and they're also <laughs> fucking with you. Like they give you the finger. Like I had a bunch of jokers that were like dancing around me, giving me the finger. Did you have machine elves too? I don't believe in that thing. Yeah. I don't know what that is. Like McKenna had those experiences of machine elves. I never saw, I saw it. What I described is complex geometric patterns that are made out of love and understanding. They, they seem to me to be like the building blocks of the soul all around you all the time. Wow. Like some just gigantic impossibly large, infinite well of souls. Just these things dancing around you and they were they were never one thing. They would be one thing for a second and they change into something else and then they change into something different and the more profound the experiences got, the more profound the next one would be. And they kept saying like, look at this, look at this. Yeah. Like, the, But the words weren't real words. That's the other thing. It's like I'm saying the words, look at this. And I would have that in my head, but I never heard anybody say it. It was almost like it was triggering those the, the concept of those words in my mind. Right, right. It, it's it's yeah. pre or post linguistic, some of these experiences. <laughs>